We're going to take some of this molding clay, we're going to take some of this sculpting stuff, and we're going to sculpt a bait. Hang on a second. Are you fishing a drop shot on the bait caster? I can. That's a pretty good one, Chris. On the homemade lure. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Happy to have the big camera back. I've got a pretty good one today. So, you guys were like, hey, you do all these crazy challenges where you fish with all these crazy baits. What if you made your own bait? I was like, yeah, I can do that. So we're gonna take some of this molding clay, we're gonna take some of this sculpting stuff, and we're gonna sculpt a bait uh, I think I'm gonna do like a drop shot bait. I'm gonna sculpt two different versions. I'm gonna give Chris one version, myself the other version. We're gonna see which version fishes the best, which one catches the biggest fish. Um, have I ever designed a bait before? 100%. I have not. So it's gonna be interesting. I've got a lot of ideas of what I want in a bait. Um, as far as a drop shot goes, I'm gonna take some ideas, some of like the best of the best from other baits and uh, hopefully be able to sculpt this in. I'm not an artist, so uh, this is probably gonna turn out horribly, but I mean, what could go wrong? I've caught a fish on a duck before. I've caught a fish on a snake, a shark. Surely I can catch a fish on something I made myself, right? Let's get into it. All right, so let's look into this a little bit deeper. There's a few baits that I've got just on hand that I wanna talk about that I think are really good drop shot baits. Number one, your old school robo worm. Robo worms, they're just small, they're thin, they've got a lot of action to them. Um, they're just, I mean, they're just a flimsy bait. That's always a good drop shot bait. You've also got your trick shots by Z-Man. Super elastic, you last a long time on the hook. Notice it features a pretty wide up front. It's got a lot of ribs. It's got a little bitty flat tail right there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's got a flat tail right there, real thin right before it gets to the tail. A lot of ribs on that thing too. You've also got, by Big Bites Baits, your Smalley Smasher, which is this guy right here. Again, very similar to the Trick Shots, a lot of ribs, flat tail on the bottom, like beaver style tail, and uh, then a little thin area right here. So another really good bait. And last but not least, one of my favorites, which is the Guggen Baits Drag and Drop. Again, really thin area right before the tail. It does not feature that flat tail but it's got a bulbous area on the end, that little bulbous tail. Again, just gives it a lot of action. There's something to that thin part right there before the tail, which almost all of them feature except the robo worm, but the robo worm's just thin to begin with. So that is something I think we need to feature on ours. We need to have something thin right there. And I think I'm gonna make one that has a flat tail, like this beavered, like that beavered style tail, like you see on the Smalley Smasher and the Trick Shots. I like that. So I want that on one of them for sure. The other one I may make similar to like a bulbous tail that you see on like the Guggen baits. So that's gonna be the name of the game. I don't know what the top's gonna look like. I like the idea of ribs. Uh, let's get into it. Let's just start molding. Just wanna roll this out flat. Somewhere right in there. Now, like I said, I kind of want a thinner piece right here. I want it to be thinner, maybe not that thin. As I was saying earlier, I ain't got a clue as to what I'm doing. So, y'all bear with me. I want to flatten this tail out. And now I think we're going to take this really, really sharp piece. We're going to Start drawing some, some ribs on this thing. Now I don't want to do too many segments, or too deep at least, because I want the hook to be able to go in. But, here's one thing I am going to do that's different than these guys. I'm actually going to create a little bit of a lip on the tail. Now what that's going to do or at least what I want it to do, is create a little bit of a, a pocket for that water. So, you know, we fish a drop shot really, really slow, but I actually tend to fish mine a little fast. Like I'll pop it and drag it and I move it around a pretty good bit. And if that can uh, 
trap some water and give it even more movement while I'm reeling it, that would be huge. All right, so what I've done is I have created a worm style bait, a little thin area right there. I've got a little bit of a lip on the back of the tail. Hopefully that'll give it a little bit of movement. Not totally sure. And uh, yeah, I like it. I may actually do something different real quick here. Watch this. What if, just daring to be different here, what if I split this tail? All right, I'm pretty happy with that. It looks a little weird, but I think it'll work. I do like the idea of the split tail, though, I'll tell you that. All right, so what I need to do now is get that on some uh, wax paper and get it in the oven. So I don't quite know what I want to do next. I think we're going to go with a more straight tail as opposed to that one being the way it is with that, you know, rounded tail, like beaver style tail. So this is what we've got to work with. I do think we need to have that little thin segment going into the tail. I just, I just prefer that style where it's got that little thin tail. I think we're going to leave that more rounded like a bulbous style tail. I'm not really going to put much design on it. We're getting somewhere. Where we're getting, I don't know, but we're getting somewhere. What if we just take this and just make indentions all down the side? This one's going to be a bulkier bait. It's actually pretty similar to the Guggen squad or Guggen baits a little bit. Oof. That's a little suspect. I like it, but it looks pretty similar. And I'm not even trying. It's just if I were to design a bait, this is kind of the process I would go through. But it does. Like, as I'm looking at it, it looks really dang similar. Whoops. Well, that's... Oh, well. I need to go bake them in the oven. And then we're going to come up with some colors. Okay. So there you go. I'm going to go bake these. I think it said for 10 minutes at 300 degrees. And uh, then we can do a mold. And here they are. So we've got number one right there. He's been cooked. Number two right there. He's been cooked. So we're done with that paper. Now we've got to get this box over them like that and make a mold out of them. All right, so you'll notice I've got the box taped down all around it. We're just going to hope it doesn't leak. And over here, I have got our mixture, part A and part B. A lot of people ask me about this stuff. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, it used to be that it was only like, it was less than $30, but I'm not sure if it was because of my videos or what, but a lot of people started buying it and the price went up to nearly $40. So I'll leave a link in the description though if you ever want to do this yourself. We're just going to dump it in here on top of our baits. All right, folks, so the baits are in there. We do not have really much leakage, just a little bit right there, but nothing bad. It takes six hours for this stuff to set up. So we'll uh, see y'all in six hours. Just dumped it in there, it looks pretty good. We'll uh, flash forward in three, two. Six hours later, let's see some magic. So let's take this thing apart and uh, let's see what we got here. All right, so that box is done. I should just be able to pull this thing right up and it should separate from those baits. Sure enough, and we have this perfect mold. You can see all the little details I put in it. I like that a lot. I need to trim that as hard as a rock. It's like plastic right there. Those are gonna be fun to get up. All right, so name of the game. I've got some just totally random remelt here that we remelted several times. It's just got random glitter colors in it, but it's like a green pumpkin type color. Got that one. We've got some watermelon red. This is a brand new color. It's got no remelt in it, except for the crap that's trying to stick to it right there. We could remelt that watermelon red, and I've also got some pearl white because I really want to do a white, like bellied one of these. I think that would look really good with either one of these colors. 
So I'm gonna mix up some of that and uh, let's go. We got it at 350. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this in these molds. This is just that green pumpkin with a ton of different glitters. We're just gonna do one color to start with. We'll add in our pearl white here in a minute. All right, I'm, I'm doing a special color that I'm gonna do last here that I'm gonna save for when we get out on the water, but a lot of you that have been on here for a while already know what I'm about to do. But when you get a bait like this, open pores are notorious for you know overlap. You got a little bit of excess there. Super, super simple. For all you new guys out there that are just watching this wondering, well, that looks ugly. How do I make it look pretty? You take a razor blade and you're just gonna go up the side along the bottom just trim that excess. So if you ever hear me in a future video, if you're new, talk about trimming the excess of these open pores, this is what I'm talking about. You just take a little bitty razor blade and you just go up the side of the bait and you trim the excess. All trimmed up, ready to rock and roll. All right, ladies and gents, so the baits have been poured. I've got like three or four of each style um, of every color. Me and Chris are gonna do a little compare session, see if we can't get on some fish, and I'm hoping they're gonna be some big ones. So, let's get to the water. Um, let's go right now, let's go. Hey, Chris. Hey. So we're on the water now. There's the bags of the baits that I made. Me and Chris are gonna do this drop shot challenge like where we created our own baits. I just realized I was pointing y'all at Chris and I was doing the talking there, so that was, that was probably a little weird. We're gonna do the little drop shot challenge. So Chris, we've got 30 minutes. You're gonna fish with one style of bait. I'm gonna fish with the other, and then we're gonna swap. You've got different colors in there. Right. So hang on a second. Are you fishing a drop shot on the bait caster? I can. Is that what you're gonna do, or are you going? I'm gonna start with the regular, but just in case I need it, because I've got just straight braid on that. So I just caught a glimpse, and there was, he's. He's got a drop shot weight on the bait caster, so it caught my attention just for a second. I thought something crazy was about to happen. So anyway, we're gonna get rigged up. Um, Chris, do you, do you want the beaver style tail or the more like rounded tail? Blind draw. Well, they're both the same. Oh, I thought you said it was really No, they both got the same number. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna start. Same baits, two different baits in each bag. You're gonna start with the beaver tail because I've got the white version of that rounder tail. So that's how that's how we're gonna know. So we're gonna see which one gets a bit more, um, and uh, let's go. All right, so I'm starting with the uh, green pumpkin pearl, and y'all know how I do. I go straight through the eye, not the eye. I guess the head of the bait, and then just come out, exposes more of the hook that way. I don't lose as many fish, and we're off. I thought I already had one. That would have been crazy. I think I did. Look, look at what it did to the hook. I think I did. Huh? I am pretty much a politician. Full of lies and cheap tricks. That's me. Got one. Flipping. I mean, I felt like I set the hook on him pretty decent. As long as the string was there, I was good, and I did. That's right through the top of the nose. It's like right through his nostril. So give one up to that one. That's like six, seven minutes in. Shablam! Not a giant, but he took it. All right, bud. You're a good two. Look at his tail. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird this late in the year. But I appreciate it. All right. So I'm switching. I'm going right back to that white pumpkin, or is it pumpkin pearl? Got that white on the bottom. White looks a little janky there on the bottom, but hey, it'll do. And Chris is going with the bait caster. He's switching. He's going to the bait caster. Yeah, they're a little bit fatter. 
Yeah. Oh, this is a, this is a pretty good one, Chris. Well, hang on. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. He just he just ran. Yeah, but when you're out here catching five, inhaled it, son. The thing is deep in there. All right. How about that guy on the little flat tail? Hey, he's bleeding just a little. I think I got him in the tongue. So I got to get him back in the water, dude. Thanks for biting. Huh? Oh, see, oh, see, yeah, right on the way in. If he grabbed yours, just a F Y I. Finally, get him in the boat. Turkey, all right, one for me. All right, Chris, that's gonna do it, bud. It's game over. Game over. I don't think the little split tail idea I had with the flat, with the split tail, I don't think that was the, the deal. So I think we're gonna have to say the the little, the one with the boldest tail that Chris is fishing with right now, the, you know, the, the rounded tail, that's the one that catches the more fish, which honestly makes a lot of sense. It's very similar to the dragon drop. The dragon drop catches a ton of fish. I mean, I, that's my go-to drop shot bait. This guy right here took the cake. So, let me know in the comments right now what you thought about this. Should we do any other baits like this? I'm thinking like a boot tail, paddle, paddle tail swim bait, something like that. Um, I think in the fall, so in the next couple months, I think that's gonna absolutely kill. So I may start designing a boot tail as well. Chris, what'd you think of those? Uh, they're pretty good. I mean, interesting that you can do that from your own home with just clay and some silicone. So, that's really the cool part is that, I, I mean, literally, I designed that y'all watched me design them like I just sat there and was like okay here's a bunch of baits that I like let's take what's good about all of them and try to piece them together and make our own and that's exactly what we did today Chris you got on one fish and you did it on a bait caster just way to go baby of all things drop shotting on a bait caster just like Carolina rigging right what just like Carolina rigging Chris no there's weights and hooks on a Carolina rig right there's weights and hooks on a Texas rig exactly all the same. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this guy. If you liked it, go ahead, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment below, and as always, hit the red subscribe button, turn it from red to gray, hit those ding dong notifications so you'll be notified anytime I drop a new video, and we will catch you next time. Y'all have a good one.